In a couple of his best-known works, J.R.R. Tolkien introduced the world to the lovable race of hobbits. The hobbits inhabit the Shire. They are very similar to human beings in many ways, but they're not really human. They're obviously related to us, but they're not the same as us. The main difference uh, is in their physical stature. Uh, they're about half of our size and in their mentality, in that they think in many ways the same way that we do, but there are important differences. Um, first and foremost, their mentality is quite different, in that um, they are not really interested in the big questions of life. They're not interested in greatness, in power, in enormous wealth, in metaphysical speculation, and they're not even particularly curious as to what goes on outside of their own little quiet and prosperous corner of the world. They don't really seem to be worried too much about what happens to them after death. Um, they actually seem to enjoy the process of getting old. Um, they like the pleasures of the flesh, but not to excess. They will go out to parties, gorge themselves on excellent food, get blind drunk, but you, you can be quite certain that the next day they'll be up working in the fields, <clears throat> not because they believe that that's morally the right thing to do, but that's just the pattern of life that is natural to them. I don't think one could qualify them as atheists, but it's highly unlikely that they spend a lot of time thinking about whether or not there are any gods. If you brought the subject up, they would say, yeah, I guess there, there might be out there, but the, that's about as far as their speculations would go. Um, their speculations or their literature, as Tolkien um, points out, is generally confined to um, books full of things that everybody already knew. Uh, if a hobbit wants to hear a story, he prefers to know the plot in advance as well as the ending. Anything that uh, that doesn't disturb his peace of mind uh, is uh, what he wants to hear. Now, this is a very, very interesting um, illustration, fictional, um, of what I would call the Epicurean mindset, Epicurus an ancient Greek philosopher, as we all know, who taught a philosophy that is very similar to that which the fictional hobbits actually live. Um, he says that we, our main problem is we don't know what's good for us, or we forget what's good for us over the course of our lives. We chase things that won't give us happiness, and we worry about things that we have no control over. Uh, we worry about what the gods are going to do to us. Well, there are no gods. We worry about what's going to happen to us after our lives. Well, there is no afterlife. And we um, chase after things that actually bring us um, misery as opposed to happiness. And he espoused a philosophy of quietism that essentially said, take life in small bites, enjoy the little things, and don't bother yourself with the big um, questions of life, the universe, and everything. Now this is a uh, enormous um, generalization about the Epicurean philosophy, and I don't claim in any way to be an expert, but as I say, um, there have been many attempts to actually portray what an Epicurean society would look like, and if you ask me, the best would happen to be the, uh, the, the fictional people of the Shire, the Hobbits. <coughs> Now, in the face of our own mortality, in the face of the mortality of our planet, or our physical universe even, which logic or reason tends to tell us that time will eventually grind down to nothingness, I would say that Epicureanism is a very reasonable philosophy. The uh, hobbits were onto something. They knew they were going to die, but a plate of sausages and mashed potatoes still tastes very yummy. Um, loafing underneath a tree, listening to the babbling brook, is still an extremely pleasant experience, as is bouncing your infant child on your knee. So, the hobbits actually um, were Epicureans, at, at least as far as I understand Epicureanism. The only issue that I have with Epicureanism is, and, and this actually comes out in The Hobbits as well, is it tends to tell you not to speculate. 
if a hobbit is curious as to what is going on in the outside world or wants to understand what the life, the universe, and everything means, he's generally viewed with suspicion by the other hobbits to the point where he's, in a low-level sort of way, um, blackballed or ostracized by society. He, uh, I shouldn't really say ostracized, but generally considered to be a bit of an eccentric and a disturber of the peace, which is a meaningless title because there's no penalties attached to it. There don't seem to be any penalties attached to doing anything in, in Hobbit life other than social sanction, which is a very powerful thing. The Hobbits don't even seem to have any government to speak of. So they do actually have a somewhat boxed-in mentality. And Epicureanism, as I understand the philosophy, does tend to discourage speculation. It almost takes it as a matter of faith that there is no God or are no gods. It doesn't try to disprove the existence of gods. It just says that it is, it is not desirable to think about such things, so don't. It also seems to say that it is not desirable or useful to think about what happens to us after our death, so don't. And that is the only reason why I think I would not really like to um, call myself an Epicurean, an Epicurean. I totally, and as much as I understand them, agree with their ethical precepts. Their cosmology kind of makes sense to me. And they do tend to emphasize the amount that we simply don't know and maybe will never know. That I do agree with. But again, in the face of universal mortality, and I do mean universal when I say this, theirs is at least one suggested antidote. antidote. There are many others, um, but Epicureanism is a very good example of um, how we deal with our own mortality. I can't subscribe to that because my mind won't let me just stop speculating, but for a great number of people, and I would say a great number of people who don't even recognize this in themselves, Epicureanism is uh, a very, very central philosophy to their lives. We all say that we know we're going to die, but we live like we're going to live forever, and we just pretend that we don't know. Thank you.